Hey guys, you've got the Kent Media Group duo in the studio today. I'm Jack. I'm the Beanstalk, also known as Ryan, better known as Lofty. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Avalites T3 and the T3 wing. Hopefully I've got that the right way around. Yes, I did. Excellent. So uh, this is the first time we'll be unboxing them. Well, actually, I'll tell a lie. We have opened this one up when we first got it, just to have a quick look. But the wing is still sealed. It's still got the sticker on it. So uh, let's get started, shall we? I'll let you do the honours because you've been waiting for this for so long, haven't you, Lofty? Let's do it. Awesome. There's a pair of scissors. Not that you need them actually for the T3, but because we've already got the sticker open, so. I'll move the wing out of the way for now, shall I? We'll come back to that in a little while. So, sticker is already, uh, sticker's already cut, the seal is off. If I to open, the outer packaging, we get a lovely inner box. Pretty. All matte coated um, with a nice big layout of the T3, just to get an understanding as to the, uh, the size and the layout. Um, obviously, in full Avalox branding. I like the new boxing, the, the inner boxing is really nice, isn't it? Very smart. They are very nice. And as we graciously lift that off, just like the we can add that in a sound effect later. <laughs> we can see what it comes with the, uh, with the T3. We've got a USB A to locking USB 3.1 on a USB C. That means you can get speeds of up to 10 gigabits per second over this USB cable. Does it need 10 gig a second? It doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't, but we've got it anyway. It's just to show that they're in focus as well. And then bring it back out. It's one side. And this is the new case that it comes in, isn't it? So the case that comes with these, this is the same for the T3 and for the T3 wing, is a very nice shell, hard shell case. I like that it's got the little embossed logo there as well. It does, yes. Nice. It's a nice, nice felt overlay. So it's a very soft case, but it's also very robust. And as we pull that open, here we have, in all its glory, the brand new Avalites T3. So does that mean you get to pull off all the plastic on it? It does. Who are you going to save it for, you or me? Is this case made by Standby, Standby Technical Gear? Standby Technical Gear um, also do a lot of the new products on the Avalite shop if you do want to check that out. I personally do have one of their technical t-shirts, they are very good. Rubbing it in, just because you've got a t-shirt. So the question is, are you putting the plastic off now or are you going to save that till later? Ooh, I think we're going to save that for later. Okay, cool. So um, should we compare this next to the original Titan Mobile which we've got behind us? Yes, let's do it. Awesome. So, hopefully this is the right bag. It certainly looks like it because it's uh, been used quite a bit. Let's take that out of the way as well, pop that over there. So, there's the original bag that the Titan Mobile came in. Like a laptop style case. Quite like this one because it's got all the storage compartments, but I think I prefer like the sleekness of the new one. I mean, we're gonna flight case it anyway, so it's not exactly the end of the world, is it? Give that to you. I'll bring, put the bag out of the way. Thank you very much. So very similar sort of format size-wise, aren't they? But a completely different new style. So um, yeah, this is the original Titan Mobile, the original original V1 because it's got the original style in. A little bit dusty, we probably should have cleaned that before we did the video, but hey, this is a very impromptu thing, so there you go. And obviously then, now comparing it to the brand new T3, which is beside it. Um, I'm gonna hand over to you, because you're the more technical expert with this side of things. You know a lot more than what I do, but they're both very similar consoles in terms of outputs and obviously faders and things, aren't they? But there is a little difference in the amount of, like the number of keys and things like that. Over to you. Absolutely. <laughs> there, is a, there is a slight difference, um, obviously, Upon first noticing, you do get the familiar layout of your three encoder wheels at the top, your 10 faders at the bottom, and your programmer keys down by the side, along with your soft keys. If 
for all of your functionality on the Titan Suites. One big difference that a lot of people have been talking about, and I would go as far as to say is controversial, is the decision to actually only put 12 executor keys, execute the slash macros up in the top right corner, whereas you did have 20 on these originally. However, originally you, some of these executors, just along the bottom here, were actually originally assigned to workspaces. So they're already pre-assigned, aren't they, ready to go for something else. So you kind of these, you, you can assign them to what you want to, whereas you, you say you're losing 10, but you're also using 10 anyway to begin with, or slightly less than 10, but. Exactly, so in terms of defaults, whilst all 12 on the T3 will be completely clear, you only have 13 available to use unless you start unassigning your workspaces. But again, that's not too much of a problem because on the Titan PC suite, you can switch your workspaces on screen instead. So that's not a problem. Makes it nice and easy. Another thing that's worth mentioning as well is that you've got the uh, little kickstand at the back, haven't you, for the mobile there. We've got one on the T3 as well. We just a little one at the back, if I remember rightly. There is a very small one. And the rather, than, rather than having an actual kickstand out the back, there are just a small, small little leg that comes out from the top of each corner, as demonstrated and they fold out. Nice. So rather than one linear bar straight across, it is on two separate legs. I quite uh, like that as well. If you look, um, you probably can't see it very well on the video. Um, maybe try and turn it around a little bit. No, uh, you might be able to see it there. Let's turn that one around as well. The T3 sits a little bit shallower than the mobile does. So a little bit closer to the workbench. It's quite nice. It's it's very, very well, um, very well felt out. Um, especially on a race surface like this, we're actually filming this on top of a one meter high stage deck, which for my kind of size is perfect. However, if you were to look at the slope on the Titan Mobile, it does mean my wrists have to Doing flex that, back yeah. quite a lot. It's That's not very I ergonomic. Thought. However, it's got a rounded edge, isn't it? Obviously, this one as well. Was this is the T3 is obviously a bit more hard edge, but that's not a bad thing at all. I don't think. No, especially it's definitely not. Um, the round edge really does help with the Titan Mobile's cover, um, as it does just slide on over the top. Um, I think I prefer this not having the cover though, because um, <laughs> the cover's great. Don't get me wrong. I always think it looks like a stormtrooper like <laughs> <laughs> costume sort of thing, but um, obviously when you're sort of picking it up all the time, it is prone to. I don't know if you can see it in the video there. But a little bit of a, a little bit of snapping. Actually, that whole edge is, is completely broken off at the bottom there. Um, so I think it's quite nice to be able to get rid of these and then put it in the hard case. Um, obviously, for us, we've got everything in a in a long flight case. I'm not going to get it because it's at the back over there. Um, which we'll probably do with these for the time being until we get our custom-made consoles made. We're planning to sort of put them in a sliding drawer and a tilting touchscreen, aren't we? Which would be pretty good for you. Yes, the good thing about having uh, swapping out the uh, the hard shell cover for an actual soft shell case, in a, well, a hard shell case in a way, is that not only are you protecting your faders, your buttons from anything getting picked into it or any dust getting down, you're also protecting your outputs on your DMX. You're also protecting your USB socket. Very good point. Yeah, and you're also protecting the bottom of your uh, case, which also includes uh, your, the bottom of your console, which also includes those kickstands. Whereas originally your only protection was really on the top with the hard shell. Uh, one big difference that I noticed is obviously is the button layout above the faders. Obviously on the original mobile you've got the swap and the flash button together. But on here they're the opposite way around, aren't they? So you've got one on the top and then one on the bottom. Bit yes. of a design change. Um, so it'd be interesting to see. But you've got to say the flash buttons are at the bottom now, aren't they? And then the swap buttons are at the top. Yes. Which actually makes quite a bit of sense really because I see one at the bottom of the fader because it's nice and easy to kind of just access and tap and absolutely and uh, by muscle memory it's usually relatively easy once you're on Titan mobile and you've used it for quite some time it's very easy to when you don't look to distinguish what's a flash button and what's a swap button mm. however obviously non-experienced users may not necessarily find it as easy and accidentally slip from flash to swap in there done that <laughs> one too many times however <laughs> Having the, the flush buttons down at the bottom and the swap buttons at the top of the fader separates that nice and easy. It also leaves you plenty of space as to whether you wanted to label above or below yeah, very good point. your faders. Whereas originally you would either have to put your labels across the top here and risk snagging your tape with the edge of a, uh, edge of a fader cap. Or try and fit it in above here which means you block off yeah, all of your tight. menus. Or you put it at the bottom which means you then can't see it as it's then sloped away from you. So... In a sense, the layouts around these faders 
is actually a lot better. It's very much improved. Um, and there's been a, quite a difference in, in the keys as well. All of these old menu keys, very clunky. However, the T3, uh, this is also the same on T3 wing, these have been replaced with Chemi, uh, Cherry MX keys, which means they are near silent operation. They are also backlit keys, whereas all of your indicators here on your executors always had LEDs at the top. What we'll do in a little while as well, um, we'll get the computer running underneath. Um, we'll plug them in so you can see them both lit up, but we'll get onto that in just a minute. The other thing I've just noticed as well, I've only literally just noticed it now, is the go button. Yes. At the bottom, a lot bigger, and that's really, really nice to see. For such a mission critical button, uh, I was very surprised that the go button was actually as small as this. <laughs> Although big and red, and you can't exactly miss it. Um, again, if you're working by muscle memory, it may be very easy just to hit the side of the button and not fully press it. Whereas your go button here, a lot larger, if you needed to it, hit go. I, I much there. prefer the design choice on this. So this is obviously a much more modern looking smart controller than what the mobile, there's nothing wrong with the mobile, I will say. Um, but I quite like that it's all sleek, everything is black. So you're removing the blue and the red buttons, for example, which just everything keeps in it. It just looks really, really smart it's, and really corporate, isn't it? That's what I'd like, yeah, it's probably absolutely. the best way to explain it. Absolutely, it's followed on from the uh, from the flagship design that's now landed on the D9 series. Um, by the look of it, this is the way that Avalites are actually taking their consoles from now on. Um, so we will see in the coming years there will be new releases for some of the favourites, such as the Tiger Touch and the Quartz, potentially coming soon. Um, who knows? We don't, but we will hear from Avalites uh, when when everybody else does. Give us a shout. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's have a quick look at the output ports as well. Um, so the focus is probably going to be a little bit out on the camera for this. Let's try and bring it over there a little bit. And I'll tell you what, let me just grab the lens and let's focus it up a little bit more onto the ports there. So the original mobile, again, this is the original original. So this has two USB ports, uh, whereas the V is it v2 they call it i think Top version two yes. um only has the one usb port um pe port i can never remember what it actually does that's actually for grounding so if you've got any issues over go. your dmx line you can ground your console there you go he's got a better idea than what i have obviously midi input and then you've got your four dmx outputs and the dc jack which again i think was replaced on the v2 i don't think it was there was it top of my head uh that i don't remember however the power draw that was needed for the titan mobile some computers couldn't uh, couldn't deal with it usually when you're looking at things like netbooks which sometimes are under spec anyway um, but they wouldn't have the current draw capacity on the uh, on the USB port to oh so you had to give it the extra power to be able to turn all the LEDs and stuff. but obviously modern computers and stuff now yes. power delivery is not a problem uh, I think I mentioned it already but obviously this has MIDI input as well um, which I think we've used once We've used once originally, however, it was definitely going to be something I'd try again. Um, but this was when we used, uh, we started running pixel mapping effects that were already recorded, but we were also running key lights and atmospherics off of a MIDI input from a Behringer BCF2000. Wasn't that before we had the wing? That was before we had oh, the wing. Excellent. So basically, it kind of, yeah. You, you get the wing and it kind of replaces it anyway and it's AVO functionality, so it makes a lot more sense. Um, but anyway, that's, yeah, that's the original mobile. So what's the difference on the T3? Well, the first thing is that we've got a locking USB 3.1 connection using a USB-C connector and a screw thread in the top. Like that. So it's a lot more secure. Um, USB-C, generally, it locks into place very nicely. However, it's just for something so show critical as not losing four local outputs and entire <laughs> control of your software, it's very handy to have a, a locking connector. Yeah, at the definitely. Top there. I definitely like that improvement. Um, we still have the same five uh, Neutric... Uh, five pin XLRs all optically isolated as is on the Titan Mobile um, the other thing they have taken away the MIDI inputs uh, as you can now MIDI uh, directly into Titan PC suite with the T, uh, T2 and above um, but they have replaced this now with a three pin XLR socket and that's to run the LTC timecode which means that you can run LTC clocks and things like that, for example, directly into the desk. Oh, that's really handy. So it's just taking the reference signal and it's straight into the console then, effectively. Absolutely. And it's also got a little, is it LED there as well? A little signal indicator, so you can tell when you've got the, uh, the signal coming in, which is quite handy. Absolutely. Fantastic. Right, let's just focus this back up again, get it in the right place. There we go. So, there's the mobile. Let's flick it back around there. The original mobile. Are we going up or down? We're going down. There we go. And there's the T3 next to it. 
So we'll do a quick stop, we'll have a swap over, and then we'll unbox the T3 wing, and then what we'll do is we'll get the original mobile wing and put it side by side, and we'll look at the differences between those. Hold the line caller. So as if by magic, the Titan Mobile's disappeared, and the T3 wing has arrived on the desk, sitting next to the T3. Lofty, I'll let you do the honours with this one again. This is the one that we haven't opened at all yet, so we have no idea what's inside. So, down to you. Well, by a stroke of luck, it should be a T3 wing, however... Hey, if it was a T3, we might have to stop the video and start again. And just pretend. Yeah. And again... Oh I'll uh, remove the... Uh, the light for one in the box. There we go. Take that out of the way. Same concept as the uh, as the T3. The uh, the inner box also has a printed layout of the T3, including your page swapping, all of your executors, and more of your playback faders. Um, again, following the same layout with swap buttons at the top and flush buttons at the bottom. But let's get this out because this video is about a lighting desk, not a box. <laughs> Hey, we all have a box. And there's the USB cable in this one as well. It's not sitting on top, I've just noticed. So maybe this is a new thing with the other boxes. So the USB cable is in there. Maybe it was in that when we opened the original one, I don't know. We can always look back at the video and find it. So same again, comes in the... Uh, is it a hard case or a soft case? What do we call it? I would call it a hard shell case. Hard shell, I like that. Again, with the embossed logo, really, really like that. Nice and smart. Keeping everything nice and protected. There she is. Look, again with all the plastic on it, ready for you to peel off. But not now, that's going to be later on job, yeah? Later on job. <laughs> I suppose it, it's cut around the faders though, isn't it? Yeah. Of course, that might be a little bit of fun, but that you'll enjoy that. It's, it's always going to be fun. Um, but again, same concept applies. You have the USB-A to USB-C uh, on the USB 3.1 standard with a locking screw connector to make sure it doesn't fall out in the middle of your gig. Awesome, I'll take the case out of the way. As expected, um, the, as the wing and the T3 also match up in height, they are only 50 millimeters thick, so only around about two inches. Um, and also with the Titan Mobile, where you had the rubberized edges, um, which I personally was not a fan of, however, on the T3 wing, when you rearrange it into its proper proper coordination, oh, I like you that. can so, yeah, offer they... that up a lot nicer, and it's a nice, smooth, it's a consistent surface going across, rather and than this having This is the way around you always prefer to have it, isn't it? You always prefer to have the wing on that side, obviously, because then all the faders match up and you program into this side then. Exactly. Same it's... like a console. Exactly, and on your uh, PC screen, you always have the uh, bottom right corner will always have the programmer, so it makes sense to put all good of your point. functionality yeah. down the that Yeah, very, very well. good point. And with like, uh, when it's set up like this, can you get the USB cable down the side? Because I noticed in the side of the wing, it's the same as the old mobile, where the socket is slightly recessed as well. Do you want me to grab the focus on the camera? Let's have a quick look, if you can see that there. So of course, yes, you can put that in. The uh, connector is, it sits towards the back. Here. So rather than being at the front, it is at the back. So at least it means you can pop the cable right in there and then route it out and then down the side of the console between the two and it means they're going to butt up quite nice and closely. I've noticed the ID switch as well. Um, the mobile's got one of those, but it's got three, isn't it? Three, it three positions, where this is only two. So that's something new to add, obviously. But I don't think I've ever seen... <laughs> well, I don't think I've ever seen it at all, actually, with people using more than one wing at a time, but obviously you can. Um, so this means you can only use two T3 wings and whereas you could use three before. Yes. But again, if you was going to use three wings, at that point you would have upgraded to a bigger console, I would assume anyway. Exactly that, yes. Uh, same, same goes again. You do have the built-in kickstand, which then brings you up to the same height if you were to put the kickstand on the T3 console itself. It's my first time putting the kickstand out, that is. And again, follows on, you've got the Cherry MX keys. Um, on all of your executor slash macro buttons and your page swap buttons. You have CK uh, keycaps on your flash and your swap buttons, um, which again, that was uh, that was another change that was implemented onto these. Um, again, new fader design. Um, I believe the faders are the exact same 
as what the Titan Mobile was. However, there have been some changes in the construction. I quite um, like the chrome caps as well. It's a nice little touch. It's very similar to like um, one of our sound desks, isn't it? They've done that. Just obviously yeah. The rest of the console is black. It just makes it stand out a little bit more. Absolutely. It's, it's easy to reach to. Um, and again, de depending on how you want to grab your faders, if you're finger in the middle, great. If you pinch from the side, again, great. It's very, they are very ergonomic. Uh, I much prefer these caps to the original Titan Mobile caps, and in fact... Quite soft, aren't they, on the edges? They're not, not that sharp, which is quite nice. Yes, yeah, roll, rolls off very nicely. You can grab them in good places. And, yeah, they... Uh, in terms of design, there's there's been a lot of work done. And in layouts, sort of wise, so this is very, very similar to the Mobile. I don't actually... I've not actually put the two side by side yet, so I don't know about differences. Uh, saying that, actually, what I'll do is I'll grab the wing we've got... So here's the wing. I have to move those forward a little bit. Oh, please, sorry, buddy. I just pop them there. So here's the original bag that the wing came in. This one's a little bit cleaner because it's newer. It's a newer style bag as well. So same again, the laptop style bag. And inside here is the T3 wing with its Stormtrooper type plastic. I've got to stop saying that, haven't I? I'll get in trouble by, by uh, Lucasfilm one day for doing that. If you say it three times, it will appear. Storm trooper to storm trooper, storm trooper. No, it didn't work. Worth a try, wasn't it? So yeah, this is the the newer style um, Avalite. So this is like the the V2 style, isn't it? With the like the grey edges and then the white faceplate as such. So this is obviously newer than the mobile. Yes. I'll pop that up on its little kickstand there. Because it's quite tight compared to the mobile. <laughs> it doesn't get used as much as it, I suppose. So um, let's pop it next to. I'll take the T3 out of the way, and we'll pop it next to. The T3 wing. Just leave the T3 over here. So actually, in terms of design, I think they're pretty much identical, wouldn't you say? More or less. Um, again, as, as in well, button layout and faders, numbers and stuff. Sorry. Yes, it does. It does still follow with the T3's new layout, with having the flash buttons at the bottom and swap at the top, instead of uh, the original Titan Mobile layout of having. Uh, flash and swap at the top, just in different positions of the fader. Um, but again, if you're one of those kind of people that, based off of muscle memory, it won't take long for you to transition from the Type Mobile wing to the C3 wing. It's quite handy as well. Like I say, the the buttons are in the same sort of orientation, so obviously page up and down there, and go page exactly the same layout as before. Notice that the gap is obviously where well, there's a logo here for a start, but the gap obviously is a lot smaller um, between everything. But here, obviously, it's, it's larger, so you can put, if you wanted to, you could put a bit of tape down the side, again across there, again across there. Obviously, you've got quite a bit of space here on the original mobile and at the top, but you've got a little bit more in between, so you can sort of spread things out a little bit. And you can actually see that the buttons are actually quite a lot bigger. I say quite a lot bigger. They're not much bigger, but in terms of, you know, direct comparison size-wise, they're a bit bigger on the new ones as well, which is quite nice, especially for people with fat fingers like me. Absolutely. Um, there is uh, the only other design element that has really changed between these two is that the executor buttons have moved down closer towards the tops of the faders, whereas here you did have a larger strip here. Good point, yeah. Which, um, in my point of view, I can understand why in a design element, but in a functionality element, um, it does mean that where you used to be able to put a, a length of 24mm wide tape, console tapes, along the top and the bottom and then also have space to label up your faders too. Uh, it does mean you are rather limited here unless you were to label the bottom of your faders and then label your Do you executors. Think, think you'd be able to squidge in a bit of tape between the buttons and the top of the fader or that'd be quite close? That would have to be 12mm tape to be able to do that. 24mm uh, console, oh, tape. Sorry, yeah. 24 mil console tape that I usually use will go across there absolutely fine and it will hit the tops of these absolutely fine. Your other option of course is to just have a little reference at the top and just put two strips to say what the top layer is and what the bottom layer is. It's very similar space-wise and it's just kind of swapped down where this bit on the side of the mobile is now there on the T3 wing. Exactly. It's, it's just, just a different way around of working with things. It's, it's, it, pretty much it is the same thing just in the newer frame. Yes and the the reason in terms of the design for doing that is actually more so that when you do line up the T3 and the wing you do get your function buttons up here so obviously you'll go straight over to your record patching disk and then you get over to your programmer selection but when you look that look in a line here it is all coherent it all lines up 
and I understand that from the design element. Um, I just, I just wish that there could have been a bit more space here just to put some 24 mil tape in instead. However, that's just me. Cool. Do you want to pop that stand back down on that one? What we'll do is we'll just put a quick side by side comparison. So uh, I might have to go forward again, just a little bit more of those, just to get it in the uh, camera shot. I'll let you organise those ones. Well done. So there's the mobile wing. Oh, you can see actually how much difference is that is in just height laying flat. Uh, and what do I do with the other one? I'll put it down here on the floor. Space is a bit uh, fun in the warehouse at the moment. So there we go, a direct comparison. So you've got the, uh, <laughs> there's quite a lot to put there. I was gonna say it wrong then. So the Titan Mobile wing, T3 wing, the original Titan Mobile, and then the T3 there. Um, seeing it side by side. I see what you mean about the buttons now actually as well. When you put it like this and you've got the encoder wheels here and the buttons there, it's a bit, it makes sense because they're there, but it's nice here now that they're all in one line. Absolutely. Uh, these, uh, the execute buttons that come on the Titan mobile wing don't actually line up to the ones on the mobile either. So they don't line up uh, in a line here and they don't actually line up fully to the top there. But again, there are reasons for putting that at the top as well, which also do include being able to put tapes across the top to identify things, as typically your Tone Mobile Wing will be something off screen, as will your executors, whereas your faders, you'll be able to see what you've set the legends as on the screen. So that's not the end of the world. It's more uh, being able to label your wing and identify it without having a second screen. Awesome. The other thing I've just noticed as well, um, unless they're under the plastic and I can't see them, you've got obviously on the original Titan Mobile and the Mobile Win was the panel reset buttons that were sort of a little bit hidden there and there. They're not on the T3 and T3 wing anymore. Yeah, I just noticed that. But I suppose it's, we've never used it, so why would you use it? Are you trying to find one now? The panel resets for these, I ah, do believe, ah, there is now. one. It's uh, harder to see. Okay, I'll focus that in for you. There you go. So the panel reset, rather than being on the surface, which uh, I did hear a load of jokes in the past about being spy cams. They are not spy cams anymore. <laughs> they will spy Bring on your. Uh, they will spy on your front of house engineer instead, going out to the side. Um, so what it is when you put it to the if you got the like, audio to this side, that's what it is. It's spying on the audio guy now. Exactly. <laughs> got to keep those in check. Um, <laughs> But no, your panel reset is now on the side as well, so it can't be accidentally triggered. Um, you've got to basically, you've got to be down there to get there, so you know what you're doing in that particular area anyway. But like I say, we've we've never ever touched the panel reset, have we? So never had a reason to. No, we, everything's always been absolutely fine with the Avalox products we've used so far. That's what we like to hear. So. There's your quick comparison between the original consoles. I'm not going to say the names again because I will get messed up somewhere. Um, what we'll do is we'll take away the wing and we'll take away the original mobile. Should we get these plugged into a computer, get them lit up and show everybody what they look like? Let's do it. Awesome stuff. So there are similarities in the way that the T3 and the Titan mobile actually display the indicators on the swap buttons in regards to the handles that they are assigned to. Um, once, a ha uh, once a handle has something assigned to it, it will glow faint blue on both of these. Uh, when, an example, a playback is active, which is, uh, which is the case on these, these are all programmed as playbacks, these are actually programmed as fixtures. So as the playbacks are then triggered, once they're active, the LED increase in, increases in brightness, and same goes if you were to use the swap keys to select your fixtures on the T3, if you were to do it that way, of course, um, and deselect. That would still be the case if you were to run them as playbacks, you raise the faders, or you hit the flash keys, and those swap buttons will light up. And once the handle is empty, obviously the LEDs are then cleared out to show there is a vacant handle ready to assign a patch or a playback. Um, and a very similar way as the buttons up here always have indicators uh, above on the Titan Mobile whereas the with the backlit keys on the T3 instead of having an LED at the top of all of your programmer attributes for example, see, we've selected intensity in the programmer 
so the intensity LED is lit up, whereas the button for the intensity is lit up here. And I will show you that. Lights off, please. So there's a bit of a better indication. We've selected intensity. We've selected intensity here. If we were to then move over to beam, color, position, gobo, it does light up in the same way. It's nice as well that the whole console is completely backlit. So even in like the darkness, obviously we're not, we're here not in complete darkness. We're going to turn the other light off behind as well, just to see if it gets any better. Now yeah, similar sort of thing. Um, but you can see the whole console is still backlit. So even if you're in a, like almost a pitch black control room or something like that, then you can still at least see the buttons. Whereas the Titan Mobile, okay, it's white, so you could still see things, but you couldn't see the labeling very well. Whereas now you can always see it. And it's very nice that like um, Ryan said, that if you was to go over and push the buttons, like for intensity, position, etc., that it lights up a little bit brighter so you know exactly where you are. Um, same for the clear button as well. I just noticed the clear button's always nice and bright, which is cool. Yep, so once you've selected fixtures uh, and anything you're running through the programmer, you do get a uh, slightly brighter clear button. So if I were to then double tap them, it'd also do that. And same goes for if you were to clear individual attributes. When you hold the clear button, all of your attributes for the programmer do light up and you can select what you are to clear when you release. Which is obviously the same as if you were to do that on the Titan Mobile. However, it's nicer to do, be able to do that on the backlit keys as well. Uh, it's just main, it just means that if you are to be trying to clear, as Jack says, in pitch black conditions, rather than trying to work out your labelling by looking at whereabouts the button is, you can actually physically see which attributes you are about to clear before you clear them. Which is also, it's very handy because these desks don't come with a uh, any kind of work light as the Quartz uh, Titan... Uh, Tiger Touch. Tiger Touch. That's fun. <laughs> Had to try and think then what it was. I knew what it was, I realised I, I got the words wrong. Um, so anything above the Quartz um, does have the functionality to be able to use a desk lamp. Um, these do not, however, but you do have the option is if you were to use a USB lamp that you can plug into a, another power source, another USB port in your computer if you do have one. Um, so obviously these desks don't actually feature anything for that, but that is not the end of the world. And also the backlit keys do help if you were to work in a condition where you don't have that kind of work light available. So all in all, they're both very similar in terms of lighting as well. It's just that the new T3 and T3 wing adds the backlight on the keys, which I think is a very welcome feature for us. Because obviously, well, same for any LD really, we always work in uh, low light conditions. So it's just handy that you've got them um, just to be able to sort of navigate around the, uh, sorry, navigate around the console a little bit easier. There's one thing that we haven't actually talked about yet. Go on. And this is talking about the difference in the weight between the two consoles. That's a good point, yeah. Um, so as you can see, obviously there's a lower profile. This is working with a, a durable aluminium and steel construction. Should we get the lights back on? Yes, let's get the lights back on. There we go. So the T3 has a durable uh, aluminium and steel construction to it, um, which, as you can imagine, steel would be slightly heavier. Um, but in fact... When you to get when you are to get two these two desks individually with nothing else attached, and you're not talking about the wings, we're talking about just the T3 and the Type Mobile itself. The T3 is actually documented 1.9 kilos lighter than the Type Mobile. You wouldn't think it being both portable desks, both very lightweight, but on paper, this is nearly two kilograms lighter. Makes than the the Titan Mobile. Yeah, if you're flying or something like that, using it as a fly pack with a, with a laptop or something. Absolutely. All the difference on your back if you're carrying it around all the time, or as a backup Ex desk, anything like that. Exactly. And if you were to be, if you were to integrate this with a fly rig, obviously you do have to be very wary about the uh, the airline's regulations as to what you can carry and how much you can carry. Um, especially if you're touring for a couple of days, you're going to have um, changes of clothes, you're going to have not only the desk you've got to factor in, you might be carrying the wing, you're also going to be carrying your computer, storage devices, spare cables, spare cabling, et everything yeah. like that. It, it makes all the difference when you realise that being a couple of kilograms lighter on the new T3s compared to the uh, original Titan Mobile, it does make a difference. Fantastic. So I think that's pretty much everything covered on the desk, isn't it, Loft? More or less, yes, pretty much. Um, 
awesome stuff. Well, there you go. So there you've got it. It's the uh, the original Titan Mobile, Titan Mobile Wing, and here's the new T3, T3 Wing. Any questions or comments, feel free to leave them, uh, obviously, in the comment section below, and um, catch you on the next video. Right, should we start putting these consoles away then? Yeah, no, 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 no. Hang on, hang on. What? There's one thing we haven't done yet. What's that? We haven't peeled the plastic. Ah! So this is the unsafe version, you had the safe version beforehand. There you have it, T3, T3 wing. Unboxing video, done.